Let's take a second look at the open SSL command because it allows us to fetch these certificates directly from the website and inspect them. And knowing the X509 format well enough to pass security plus is uh, a process of sort of looking at certificates from time to time. Uh, this open SSL uh, command is asked about on security plus in, in terms of some of the flags that can be passed and how it's utilized. So you want to kind of play with this one a little bit. Uh, I'm going to use the S client, which means we're going to use open SSL as a client and we're going to connect to some website. It could be any website. In this case, I'm going to choose mysa.com and we're going to put it's on 443. There's our port. Greater than sign says we're going to redirect. So instead of just printing this to the screen, I'm just going to dump it into a file called t1.pem. And it's going to give us a little bit of output. This is some of the standard error output. It's not an error, but it's uh, indicating something other than what it would be printing to the screen, uh, screen through what's called standard output. There we go. So anyway, that's stuff that was printed to the screen. Not necessarily so important, I don't think, for this. But you can see it's a let, Let's Encrypt certificate here. So that's what my SA is using. So I'm going to clear this. And if we take a look, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll cat t1.pem now. And let's take a look at what's in here. Okay, so when we cat t1.pem starting here, we have a certificate chain. And it's just mysa.com, so there's no, it's not like a subordinate uh, CA involved here. doesn't look like. We have this begin certificate and end certificate. This is where everything is sort of uh, base 64 encoded here. This is the certificate itself. And we've got some other information here. We're going to look at it in a different way. We have a TLS session ticket here. Uh, it seems like in our params file, we said we were not going to use session tickets with our website. We can see that we're using TLS. It, it's uh, TLS 1.2 with elliptic curve Diffie Hellman, AES 128 GCM with SHA 256. Okay, so that's what that looks like if we just cat the t1.pem file. Now let's use OpenSSL to parse through it. We're going to say open SSL. Now certificates are stored. This is a big one in X509 format. And our in file is going to be that t1.pem and we're going to want to evaluate it in readable text. So pause the video, get that. I'm going to hit enter. And we're going to get a much uh, different output here. So let's go up to the top where I started this. And that would be here's where I type the command. Okay, so we have a serial number that we're able to parse out of that certificate. We have not before and not after. So here's our validity period. And remember, Let's Encrypt only does it by three months. So we've got July to October. It is currently September 13th, 2020. And this uh, certificate on my SA is going to expire, which means my SA is doing a lot of work on there. And they're re-updating their certificate every three months through Let's Encrypt. Uh, here's the uh, public key info with the modulus for the public key. You can see it's indicating here OCSP. So two of the terms we need to be familiar with is OCSP and CRL, Certificate Revocation List. And OCSP is Online Certificate Status Protocol. And this is where we can tell whether or not this certificate has been compromised or whether or not this certificate is no good. It's like revocation type information. And we'll look more closely at OCSP as we move forward. You can see that, again, this was a Let's Encrypt certificate. Subject alternative name is another thing you want to jot down in your notes, S-A-N. These are the uh, URLs that this certificate could be used for. So it could be used for m.mysa.com, which is probably mobile. Again, mobile.mysa.com, mysa.com, and www.mysa.com. So in addition to just mysa.com, the subject alternative name that this certificate would work for would be these other ones. So that subject alternative name uh, identifier is a big one. 
we have our certificate policies here. Okay, and these are kind of interesting to look at. Um, these are called OID, object identifiers. And let's take a look at this one. So this number right here is in a format that's pretty specific. I'm just going to copy that. And let's jump up to like Google here. And let's look at this object identifier. Now you don't need to memorize all of these, obviously. But here it is. Okay, so this OID says the domain was validated. It's attached to certificates issued by Let's Encrypt. Um, and it, I'm assuming that this object identifier for the certificate is just that. It is a validated domain. There are lots of OIDs you can kind of look at. So let's look at 136141. And you can see that this certificate starts with 1.3.6.1.4.1. So let's see what's up with that. And these are 1.3.6.1.4.1. So any OID that starts with that is a registered private enterprise. And so ours was uh, 1.3.6.1.4.1.4497. And then probably 1.1.1 is what the private enterprise can assign to it. So here are the different private 1.3.6.1.4.1.108 .1 is Emulex. Nokia. If they issued a certificate that was a validating a domain, it would have an OID associated with it of 1.3.6.1.4.194. IBM was early in the game. Look at this, 1.3.6.1.4.1.2, IBM. Cisco, they're right up there in those early OIDs. And we go all the way down. I don't know that Let's Encrypt is even listed on this list. This is not a comprehensive list. And it, you can't really find an OID lookup tool or a comprehensive list of all OIDs. And I don't see the Let's Encrypt one on here on this particular list. But these are all the private enterprises that could possibly be issuing certificates that would identify domains in this way. Um, I would really recommend that uh, you look up those OIDs and just kind of, you know, Google around and see what different OIDs are there and just try to get your head around that a little bit. Not, you're going to be probably asked about that on Security Plus in detail, I doubt it. But it's good to know that the OID is attached to a certificate, just like a SAN, a subject alternative name, is a list of alternate domains a certificate can work with. It's part of the certificate that's going to be there, those policies. Here's another command we can utilize with OpenSSL. And again, OpenSSL would allow us to do things like uh, it would create a CSR. You can create uh, and verify certificates, private keys. You should really look up everything OpenSSL can do. Uh, so if we were to do OpenSSL X509 in uh, that PEM file we downloaded from ISA and look for the issuer and the issuer hash, this command would simply tell us who issued this certificate that we just extracted from that website. And we can see here that it's a Let's Encrypt certificate. Let's say I just wanted to check the uh, validity date on a certificate. Open SSL, X509 in, there's a certificate that we fetched from the website. Dates, no out, right? And this would tell us, here's our validity range. Again, we are able to parse through this X509 format. Take a look at what T1.pem actually looks like. And ask yourself, how was it able to extract this, right? X509 format. And you can do some of this in real time uh, by using the pipe. So I could say OpenSSL S client connect, something like ars technica.com 443. This two here is that standard error that I kind of mentioned a little while ago. We don't want the error messages. We just want the output messages. So we're going to take the error. We're going to redirect that to dev null. This is just kind of a thing that we stick on here. We're going to take this open SSLS client, this certificate, and instead of redirecting it to a file like t1.pem, we're going to redirect it to the open SSL command again. We're going to have it parse through X509. We're going to have us show us the validity date. So for Ars Technica, for example, if I hit enter, you can see that the Ars Technica certificate expires February 26th, 2021. I could also show the issuer. I could say, okay, who issued the ArsTechnica.com certificate? See, and it says this is an Amazon right here. And so we can sort of uh, pipe things around and we can do real time uh, certificate inspection using OpenSSL S client, the pipe command, and then OpenSSL on the other end to kind of verify the information that's coming out of that 
from the internet. There's one more thing that I'd like to show you here with OpenSSL. You can do real-time encryption. So let's say I create a file, one, two, three, and I call it test.txt. All right, so I've got a plain text file called text, uh, test.txt. I can use OpenSSL to encrypt it using AES 256 CVC, right? Uh, we can use a salt to go with it to make it a little more secure. The in file is going to be test.txt. The out file will be something called test.enc. And it's going to ask me for a password. And if I do an ls here, and it's telling me instead of using a salt, use pbkdf2 password base key derivation function. It's saying use a key stretching algorithm like this instead of just passing salt. It's giving us some good advice here. If I cat test.enc here, you can see that we have something that has been encrypted and it looks like it's also been base64 encoded. And if I wanted to uh, decrypt this file, it would be OpenSSL AES 256 CBC hyphen D for decrypt. Uh, hyphen A would be, uh, A is ASCII because we're actually uh, putting this into base64 format, so this makes it an ASCII file. Uh, and we're going to take that encrypted file and we're going to decrypt it into something called test.new. So this is a great way to kind of just work with the AES 256 CBC GCM, whatever you want, right? Type in the password I put on it. And if I cat test.new, you can see that I've got my plain text output compared to. There's our base64 encrypted test.inc. So OpenSSL is cool for just encryption and decryption as well as, you know, verifying certificates. So I'll leave you with this one last thing. Um, I like, I think OpenSSL is pretty cool. Um, you can, I would suggest doing a man for a manual page, uh, OpenSSL, and kind of browsing through it to see some of the um, options. And then this, in uh, addition to Google for examples, um, are going to be... Uh, important here, PKCS is an important acronym, by the way, public key certificate standard, these numbers that come after it, we'll talk about those as well. But um, I would encourage you to look at it. You see, instead of S client, you can set up a server that just serves out a certificate. So there's a lot of really cool stuff that can be done with it. Um, anyway, I hope I piqued your interest and I hope you learned something about OpenSSL and certificates in general. Uh, thank you for taking the time to simply watch this video.